Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the lead code question 2244 minimum rounds to complete all tasks. Okay, so you are given a zero index integer array called tasks where task i represents the difficulty level of a task. In each round you can complete either two or three tasks, okay? So this is very important, you can only do two or three, okay? And uh, you can at a time, you can only do those of the same difficulty level, okay? So the goal is to return the minimum rounds required to complete all of the tasks. And if you cannot do it, then in that case, we're gonna return negative one, okay? So let's look at a few examples, cool. So over here, we have these tasks, so two, 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 that's one type. Uh, we have three, three, and then all of these fours, right? So what are a few things we can do to make it easier for us to find out how we can actually do these tasks. So one thing that we should note is that they are kind of divided in terms of uh, the task itself, right? So at a time, when we're, if we're doing one, two, we can only do a two, right? And at each time, we can either do two tasks at a time or we can do three tasks at a time, okay? We can't do more or less than that. So in this case, one thing we could do is we can kind of keep track of the count of each task. So the task number two appears three times, okay? Uh, task number three appears two times, and task number four appears, well, uh, one, two, three, four, five times, okay? So now is, how many times is this going to take? So two happens three times, so we can do this in one go, okay? Uh, this happens two times, so we can do it at one go. And now five happens three times, uh, five times, sorry. Four happens five times, sorry. So that can be divided at three times uh, once, and then we can do it another two times. So essentially, these are two more tries, okay? So in total, this is going to take us two plus one plus one, which is a total of four tries. Cool, so this is basically how we are going to solve it, but we gotta look for a few patterns, okay? Um, and I'll try to show you uh, what I mean by that. So, cool, so we're gonna use the count in some way to actually find the answer, but how exactly are we going to do that? So let's actually think of all the possibilities we have. So we can either do two tasks at a time or three uh, tasks at a time. Now remember, what is our goal over here? Because that is going to be very important. Now the goal is to finish as fast as possible, right? So the best example I have for this is the number six. So let's say we have six tasks, okay, of the same type. So uh, task A happens six times, for example, let's just say that. So essentially what I could do is I could do it two times the first time, then I could do it two more times, and then two more times. Well, this took me three units, or let's just say three hours of time, okay? Now, instead, what I could do is I could do it three times and three times again, and this just took me two hours. And there's only one correct answer, which is this over here. We want to do this as fast as possible, right? So that is our goal. Our goal is to do it as fast as possible. And going back to the example I just said, that really, uh, you can kind of think of it in the way that we want to first finish as many tasks as possible with three at a time right? Unless we have to do it with two, okay? So we want to do three at a time until we really can. Uh, that way we're maximizing the time utilization essentially. Okay, cool. So now that we have this, let's just look at a few examples, okay? So over here, uh, let's look at a few conditions. So let's just think of the most basic one. So let's say that a count is equal to one, right? Now in this case, we will never be able to finish the task because uh, we can only do two or three at a time. So in this case, it is not possible, so we're gonna return negative one. So that is one of our conditions. Now let's look at another condition. So in this case, next what we're gonna do uh, looking at is if something is divisible by three. Now if it is divisible, well that's perfect. All we have to do is we need to return the time that it's gonna take. So in this case, since it is perfectly divisible by three, we just return the count divided by three. That's it. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our next condition. So over here, let's say something is divisible by two. Again, let's take the number of eight, for example, right? 
So it is, uh, or sorry, logistic six, right? So it's the same thing like I said earlier. It is divisible by two, but by three, it is going to be faster, okay? So essentially, we want to first deduct the number as many threes. So we want to do the task three times at a time for as long as we can. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to look at the other conditions. So let's say when we divide the count by three, right? So we're doing it three at a time. And at the ending, we're left out with one thing, okay? We have a remainder of one. So in that case, what exactly is going to happen? So over here, uh, let's look at an example for that. So uh, the number seven is an example, okay? So in this case, essentially you're doing three, three again, and now you are stuck with one. So what can you do over here? So what you can actually do is you can remove from the last value, right? So essentially the last value, last but one value. So over here we did three at a time. Instead, we're gonna remove one task, okay? So we're gonna do three minus one tasks, making it two tasks. So now we have to fulfill an extra task. And we're gonna take that extra task and add it over here. Essentially, that becomes one plus one, which equals two. Now, this over here is going to be doable, but this is not doable because we have one, right? So when we have a remainder of one, essentially another way to think of it, this is as good as doing the count divided by three, integer division, plus one extra try or one extra time unit for this operation over here, which is essentially we remove one from the previous time. So in this case, we do two, and we add that extra over here, that way we're able to finish the task, okay? So when we have a remainder of one, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be returning the count divided by three plus one. And we have another condition, which is basically when the count gives us a, a remainder of two. So in this case, this is actually very simple. When we have a remainder of two, well, we're just going to do an extra step by doing two uh, trials or uh, at a time, right? So a simple example is the number eight, which is gonna be three and then three again, and then two, right? So six plus two, eight. So that is pretty straightforward. And this is gonna be the exact same value, which is count divided by three plus one. So one small thing I wanna do is I wanna just emphasize on this third point a bit more. Uh, so I want to think of a time where count divided by three, so integer division, is equal to zero. And uh, so if that is the case, this is not going to hold true because essentially we are borrowing one trial uh, from the pre sorry one task from the previous uh, time step, right? And if this is equal to zero, that would not be possible. But we will never have that condition, and the reason for that is because. First, we're, so what are the values less than three that would give us that value? So we have one. Well, one is being taken care of over here. Uh, next, we have the number two. Well, so two is going to be taken care of over here because it is going to have a remainder of two, right? Uh, then finally, we have the number three. And well, three is taken care of over here. After that, we have the number four and so on. And no matter whatever number it is, the value of count divided by three is going to be greater than zero. So we do not have to worry about that. So essentially, once you identify these four conditions, all you have to do is write the if conditions and you've got your result. So let's see what that looks like in code. Okay, so first we're gonna start off by keeping track of um, the counts, okay? So uh, I'll just do that using a dictionary. So for task and task, sorry, task if task not in count, in that case, we're going to add it. So count task is equal to zero. And after that, we've encountered. So we're just going to increase the count by one. Okay. So now we have our count dictionary. So let's keep track of the result starting off at zero. And over here, we're going to iterate through each of these counts. So let's just do for key comma val in counts dot items. Okay, cool. So over here, what we have to do is we've got to check if the value is equal to 1. Now, if that is the case, it is not possible, and we return negative 1. Next is when we have the condition that uh, the value is perfectly divisible by 3. Then in that case, we're just going to have our result 
and we're going to just divide it by three so val by three okay so that is when it is perfectly divisible by three and finally we have another condition so what i'm going to do is we can just merge both of these together because the uh, what we're returning or the result is the same right so to our result we're just going to add the same thing which is val integer division divided by three plus one which is that extra step right if it's divisible by two for two and if it's uh, sorry if it has a uh, remainder of one then we're going to remove one from the previous step and add it to the last one okay uh, and finally that should be it and we're going to return our result so let's submit our solution and as you can see our submission was accepted so thanks a lot for watching guys and do let me know if you have any questions Thank you.